Welcome everyone to ChessLecture.com. This is International Master William Pascal. Today we're going to take a look at my lecture on the World Rapid Chess Slugfest. This is from World Rapid Chess Championship in Qatar, 2014. It's deep into the tournament, which obviously goes very quickly because it's 15 minutes per side per game. It's a 15-round tournament, deep into the tournament. This, I believe, is round 11. This was Aronian versus Carlson, and Aronian is white. The, the players were leading the tournament at this point. I believe Carlson a half point ahead of Aronian. So Aronian plays d4, Carlson plays knight f6, and for most players, you know, it would be hard to create a quality chess game with 15 minutes on the clock. They do also have an incremental a time addition of 10 seconds per move. So that kind of makes a big difference, you know. So even when you get desperately short of time, you always have 10 seconds. You don't have to make some kind of crazy blunder. So that definitely increases the level of the game. Another thing is that these players are so strong, with their average rating over 2,800, um, that they're capable of playing an incredibly strong, accurate game, you know, in under 30 minutes. Anyway, so d4, knight f6, c4, e6 from Carlson. Both players pretty flexible opening repertoires. I mean, Carlson's kind of basically capable of playing almost anything. I mean, hard to pin him down. And uh, Aronian, as it started out, was really an English opening player, but he's branched out into other things. But he'll always be kind of positional, uh, favoring like d4, c4 kind of stuff, but capable of playing anything. So he plays knight f3, and then Carlson plays d5. And now the most balanced move in this position for white in this now queen's gambit is knight c3. G5 is a little less common. I, I say balanced, you're developing kind of both sides of the board, getting both knights out. And then a little surprise. Don't know how many times Carlson has played this, but he played the Rogozin. And um, I mean, he plays probably everything, and I'm sure he's played it before. But, you know, this is like Mamadiaro's favorite opening, and um, I don't know, Aronian might have played it before. Anyway, so now bishop g5, and this is obviously one of the main lines, which actually occurs usually by a different move order, you know, like bishop g5 first, and then knight f3 after bishop b4. But um, anyway, I mean, one can also play e3. But that, that's like a Nimzo Indian type of position. G5 is the other main move. Um, exchanging on D5, you know, is not really, I would say, you know, the main idea because you exchange toward the center and, and you, you know, make it easy maybe for black to take back with a pawn and, and develop his bishop on C8. And always in the queen's gambit, white wants to try to make black have a bad bishop on C8. So now H6 and, and then things, you know, kind of get stylistic because the sharpest move here is bishop h4. But, you know, that kind of leads to very sharp complications. And, you know, black get a lot of crazy counterplay with, like, g5 and c5 and knight e4 and really sharpen the game. So Ronian keeps it positional with bishop takes f6. And this creates an interesting dynamic because you're giving up the bishop pair, which is significant. I mean, in the long run, bishops are a little bit better than knights in general. But, you know, to offset that, I mean, white gets some compensation. I mean, it gets time, which is very important. Although, not as important in like an e as in an e4 game. This isn't a French. I mean, so, position is not that open. And um, it, it becomes an interesting struggle. The, the other thing is that the queen comes out kind of early. And the queen can be exposed. This position has a lot in common with the Moscow variation um, of the semi-slav. But it's, it's a bit different. And now e3 and castles. And now rook c1. And here, I mean, I don't know, you know, what is the main move according to theory, but I guess rook c1 is one of them. Computer engine, uh, I always do computer engine checks. You know, I'm not a, a really deep believer in, in checking everything with computers, but, you know, I'm always curious what it says. Like, Peter wants to play queen b3 there, but that moves a little bit artificial. Rook c1 seems a bit more solid. The queen could be kind of misplaced on b3. And d takes c4, and this is where black really has a choice. The other possibility is rook d8, which looks solid. 
with d takes c4, I mean, the nice thing about this move is that black uh, kind of opens the position, which, you know, could be favorable for his bishop pair in the long run. And he avoids, you know, ever having a kind of weak pawn on d5 in any kind of variations. On the downside, black gives up a little bit of central control. You know, he's going to plan on playing c5, and he'll never have an isolated pawn or anything like that to worry about. But he does give up a little bit of central control. Bishop takes c4 and then c5 immediately. No, and um, I guess we could play a3 here, but it, it would kind of lose some time. You know, trying to get the bishop pair back, you could do it, but it would definitely lose time. So Roni and castles, and then c takes d4, and Carlson, you know, he reaches a position where he's got the bishop pair and he's avoided getting an IQP. He's just a tidbit behind the development but doesn't really seem very problematic. You know, I would say this is about equal. But here things get tricky now. Aronian plays, you already saw the move there. I moved back, but I wanted to kind of talk about this. You know, Aronian plays tricky here. And I guess this is a known position that's been played by, you know, some top players before. But it feels kind of fancy to me. I mean, white can make any capture here, you know, I guess is totally reasonable. Um, knight takes d4, queen takes d4. It's kind of a matter of style, but... You know, queen takes d4, although it's okay, it looks kind of, I don't know, lame. You know, you're just probably like trading queens into an equal endgame. Got to be careful you don't drift into a worse position facing the bishop pair. Knight e4 is interesting, and it's, you know, kind of sharp. You keep the pieces on the board. You get pieces near the black king a little bit more. You open up the rook on c1, so it looks, it looks pretty good. And then queen f5 is definitely, like, tactically correct. Although, I guess, you know, black could play queen e7. It's a bit passive. It also, you know, leaves the e7 square available as a retreat. Knight g3, hitting the queen. Queen a5, staying kind of out of the way of getting, you know, trapped or being too vulnerable, like in the um, in the Scandinavian with queen a5. And then Arunian plays here sharply. I mean, again, any recapture is possible. Uh, knight takes, queen takes is interesting. I was looking at some variation here, which is kind of cool. Queen takes d4. If queen takes d4, knight c6, queen e4, with the idea of bishop d3 at some point, you know, threatening mate and trying to provoke some weakening of the black king's side. But prob in all probability, you know, it's not that much for white. So he takes back with the pawn, and, and now this is strategically imbalanced. This is interesting because... You know, black has the bishop pair, and now he even has a better structure. Although some white pieces have sort of migrated toward the king's side, giving Aroni a little bit of prospects on the king's side. Black with no defenders over there. It's still not that easy, you know, to conduct a direct attack. Black has the queen, you know, keeping the knights at bay across here laterally. So it, it looks like it's going to be an interesting struggle. And now knight c6, queen e2, and that prepares to play rook d1 and guard that important isolated pawn. And Carlson here, pretty heads up. You know, he doesn't create any more weaknesses. Very Steinitzian. He plays bishop d7. He wants to get the rooks connected, get the rook to the d5, put some pressure on the isolated pawn. And that's, you know, it's not a kind of passive move, bishop d7, but what can you do? There's no time for b6. I'm um, a3 now, and anyway, that's the usual isolated queen pawn move. I mean, you want to take away the b4 square from the, from the black pieces as a pivot point, and then bishop d6. That's, although e7 is possible, it's kind of passive. Bishop d6, you know, active. It also has a pivot point on f4, you'll see. Um, knight e4 getting in the center. I think this is, you know, not a concrete plan for Aronian, really. Just making kind of safe general moves now. And both sides have played fast, but Aronian has used, like, no time at all. Bishop f4 and rook c3. So bishop f4 saves time, and rook c3 is the best move, staying active. There's a nice outpost for the white knights at c5, and this is going to be a key kind of factor in, in the position here. So it looks like that compensates for the weakness of the d-pawn. And rook c3 turns out to be pretty good. I mean, laterally, this rook could have a lot of, you know, useful purposes um, coming across. Now rook on a to d8, and and that way, you know, the bishop can pop back to c8 at some point. 
getting out of the way, connecting the rooks, rook d1, and then b5. So here it was like, okay, everything seemed pretty good, but to start to get now kind of tricky with Carlson playing b5. This move is risky for several reasons. I mean, not just obviously tactically because he's, you know, kind of, it looks like he's trying to sacrifice a pawn or something. But, um, but positionally, this is a, a rickety move. And why, you may ask, because of this square, the c5 square. So, I mean, it was already looking like kind of dangerous outpost, but with this move, b5 now, um, this can be a really permanent outpost for a white knight or pieces. So, and, and Carlson, you know, seemed to be playing solid, and he kind of freaks out with b5. Definitely not really a good move. It looks like he just wants to mix it up. And, and it definitely, you know, tactically has some, some soundness to it. Um, if you take, you know, um, black's going to get a fair amount of counterplay here with knight takes d4 because of back rank threats. Um, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop takes b5, etc. And white's going to have problems with the back rank. But, you know, the damage is done. I mean, there's weakness to the black structure and weakness to the c5 square, and it's not as good as it looks. Uh, he thought, oh, I'll play b4, I'll crack open the pawn structure, and I'll just be better. But there are some, some technical problems here, stemming from the fact that black, that queen is now looking kind of weird on a5. And uh, there's also some, you know, loss of protection of the knight on c6 a little bit there. So it looks good, okay, now b4. And here is, is a position where... It's super tactical, and if the computer were playing, Carlson might be in trouble. Um, but Aronian is human, so you can't see like crazy variations that are just outrageously complicated. Uh, here, the best move for White was the computerized Brook C4, but this move is almost impossible for a human to find. And the idea is some crazy line like Pawn takes A3 and Knight C5, and undermining the protection of the Knight on C6. But there's another main tactical point here. The bishop on f4 is not protected. So we're going to threaten at some point to play queen e4, double threat the bishop on f4, and queen h7 mate. And that's where problems start to arise for black. But the variations are just impossible to calculate for, you know, a mortal. I mean, it would be like a2. Um, I, I don't know. And white even lets black queen in this line that I was, I was looking at. Uh, maybe queen e4. You know, f5, queen takes f4, a1, queen. I mean, you know, so obviously um, the computer can see this 15 moves deep, but Aronian, you know, probably didn't want to calculate that far. So, and he couldn't because of practical considerations. But you see the problems that the blacks created are fundamental ones. You know, this weakness of the unprotected bishop on f4, the awkward queen on a5, Weakening of the c5 square, you know, and if you put all these factors together, the possibility of mate on h7, um, you know, you can tie it together, and that's why rook c4 is good. But Aronian played the more natural kind of human-like move, rook c5, the problem being that it takes away that good square for the knight on c5. So it's kind of, they're, they're tripping on each other. Now, queen b6, okay, g3, and bishop b8. And again, here, rook c4 is probably the right move to make way for the knight on c5. But he played instead, again, a kind of human move, queen e3. This doesn't really do anything. And I think that Carlsen is fine now. He solved his problems. But again, creates complications. You know, I think this is a little bit, maybe his problem in this game, Carlsen, is that he wants too much here. And again, he's behind on the clock. Um, with a relatively equalish position, but complicated. And he starts to create complications that I'm not sure are favorable for black. I mean, f5 may be a good move if you're a perfect calculator, perfect computer. But, you know, any time you move a pawn in front of your king, you're, you're going to make some dangers um, possible. So this, this move, although it might be a good move in a utopian sense, um, Again, for a computer, for a human, it creates some practical difficulties. Um, Aronia finds this move, which is really necessary, because he needs, you know, the c5 square for his pieces and stuff. Rook b5, and then Carlson immediately answers with a tactical f4, which is good, hitting the queen. Aronia 
finds a square queen c1, and the game is still balanced here. But, you know, Aronian is playing, like, a little safer than black. You know, he, he's got the safer king. I think that's important. Now, queen c7, and then rook c5, and now there's tactical threats. I mean, you know, knight e5, bishop b5. Queen is a little bit tied down. And it gets sharp. Pawn takes pawn, knight e5, pawn takes f2 check. And it was possible to take on h2 as well, but this is good. Knight takes f2. And Carlson is okay here, but he missed another amazing computer-like move. I mean, not that amazing, because it's a simple defense. Um, he didn't play the right move, queen d6. There's an awesome queen sacrifice here with rook c8. We can expect Carlson to try to find something like this. But the idea would be to sack the queen with something like bishop e4, knight takes e5. And if rook takes, bishop takes, with all sorts of nasty, 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 nasty threats. And both rooks are very, very active. Both bishops are going to be very active. If you take the knight on e5, then bishop e6. So the dangers are just super, super plentiful. Now the white king is totally exposed. But this would have been a great way for Carlson to, to steal the initiative in this game. But he just, you know, got real aggressive and then inconsistent. He didn't find a sharp response. Played too routinely. Um, after knight takes f2, he played queen d6. And, you know, now Aronian is just totally on top in this position. And he's just winning material. And the black king looks more exposed than the white king. Rook takes c6, bishop takes, and queen takes c6. And he'd love to get the queens off. And he's going to have two pieces for a rook. And, you know, in a position where, you know, the two pieces are very active and, and they look superior to blacks. And it's, it's not possible. There's no time to take this pawn on d4. And there's always these knight forks on c6 that will gain tempi. And the pawn's still hanging on b4. And also there's still this really horrifying queen e4 threat of tearing apart the black king side, you know. And um, it's not easy to find a move for black in this position. So he's probably lost. But he takes on a3, white takes back, and still he needs to find a move, and then he plays rook f4, because I think he saw, you know, the danger of the queen coming to e4 in this position, but it's not, you know, enough. Aronian is too strong, and he was ahead on time. So, you know, at this point, it's, it's a really, really tough position. Carlson might have been able to defend with move queen e7, I think. It's probably his best chance. But it's it's a clear advantage to white. After b takes a3, rook f4, black is, is definitely lost. And Aronian was up to the task. He played bishop c4 with big threats, you know, knight forks all over the place. Um, and then, I don't know, Carlson kind of lost it. He played g5. He wanted a square for his king. But the knights and all the white pieces are swarming here. So Carlson is, is toast in this position, totally toast. Bishop takes e6 check, king g7, and Aruni, you know, with more time and a winning position, just continues to pile on the pressure. Perfect move. Rook b1, and the black king is alone, open, but they're both getting low on time. The world champion plays rook takes d4, rook b7 check, and he has to come up with a king. And Aronian has a minute, and Carlson has like 20 seconds. And with 10 second increments, it's like a blitz game. And all Aronian has to do in this position is find any kind of bishop move, almost any bishop move on the board. Bishop b3, bishop a2, bishop g4, or bishop h3. All of these moves are winning. It's just nothing fancy. Just save your bishop anywhere you want to go. The, the point is that if black could trade queens without any complications, he'd probably hold on. But the problem is that if he trades queens, the knight captures on c6 and forks his rooks. So he loses, you know, decisive material. And if he doesn't trade queens, he's going to get checkmated. And so that's the point here. And, and taking on um, e5 is going to be very, very dangerous with the black king completely open in this position. So that's, that's it. I mean, all Aronian had to do was move his bishop somewhere. But he just panicked in this position. And after such a perfect game, and such a great struggle really by both sides, Aronian panics and plays the move queen f3 check. 
But, you know, Carlson doesn't have to take the knight, he just simply takes the bishop. And this is a you know, crazy position, but white, you know, is not winning anymore. And um, I don't believe white is winning anymore, because there's some nasty threats, like queen takes h2 if the knight moves somewhere. The, the e5 knight is hanging, there's rook d1. Black can give back material. So, and then it became a crazy time scramble. Queen f7 check, the other knight goes, and Carlson gets to sack his queen. And it, it's enough. Now white's attack is broken up. Rook e7 check, queen takes, queen takes check. And it's, it's not enough anymore. I mean, Aronian's lucky he's not losing now. He has, like, basically the equivalent of perpetual check. But they played on quite a bit here. I guess Aronian really, you know, with the open king. But all the black pieces are too easy to hold together. Queen takes h6 check. He just defends the g5 pawn. And you can't win here with white anymore. Check, check, knight e4 check, king e5. And the black king is is not in any real big danger. In fact, the white king has to be careful of the rooks as well. So, queen check, king f5, knight f2, and then he doesn't even get the g5 pawn, so this is, now he has to make a draw or, you know, he's going to lose. Queen takes a7, king g6, queen check, and then... Um, we have a series of checks, check, 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 rook back, and eventually Aronian just tries to stay close to his king, pins the rook, bishop check, and this is, this is a draw now. King takes, rook takes, check, king up and rook up, and there's going to be just endless checks here, h4, g4, f4, and e4. So... One more move, a4, and he doesn't even take it. He just, well, he can't take it because it's pinned, but it doesn't matter. This is a dead draw. So a couple checks, and they agree to a draw at this point. What a fighting game, though. It was really interesting. Poor Ronian, you know, he deserved to win in a sense because Carlson took too many risks, and I went a little bit too far. And it, it was a shame because Ronian was so close to actually reaching victory, but, you know, not quite accurate in that last scramble of less than a minute on the clock to find, you know, the bishop retreat and win the game. But I thought a great game for a rapid chess, really. Amazing possibilities for both sides in that one. So a real slugfest from the World Rapid Championship in Qatar 2014. Again, this was Aronian versus Carlson. My name is International Master William Pascal, and thank you for joining me here at ChessLecture.com for a slugfest from the World Rapid Championship. Bye-bye.